Hi. In this Lightboard session, we're going to talk about making asynchronous calls using HTTP. Now, HTTP is a synchronous mechanism. It waits for the response to come back. Now, that creates some problems when we have different types of use cases where we need to fire off a request and then either get some notification back or check back in. So there are two different ways that we can achieve asynchronous invocation via HTTP. Now, the first is a polling method. So the polling method is going to rely on the client checking back periodically to see whether something has been processed. So as far as the client application, they make a call across the network, which is to send the original request. So they send the either post or put or whatever the request is. Now, on the server side, the server is going to do some initial validation. So if we've got our, our server side, it's got to validate the request. And if there is any problem, so maybe fields are missing or it's just bad data, then you've got to send back a 400 status code saying that this is a bad request. Because there's no point in taking responsibility for the request and then finding out two seconds later that th th there is a problem with it. Now, if it is OK, then whatever the process is to go and do later processing needs to happen. Uh, but as far as the, the response that goes back before you start that processing, we need to know where to go to find our polling location. So what goes back to the client is a header that tells it the new location that they need to go and see. We use a status code in the 300 range, which says to go and look somewhere else. And we essentially get told the polling URL. So that will then be the extent of what happens in this particular part of the processing. Then on the client side, they later have to go to that polling URL, periodically checking in to see whether or not the request is done. If the request is done, then they can then get a, get a response coming back that's got the data. So the, this is the polling URL. And then that, that's the mechanism for checking back in periodically. Now, as far as the advantages of this, well, we've got a client that can just check in periodically. So we don't need a network path that goes back to the client. OK, so this is quite suitable if you're going over the web or somewhere that you don't know whether you can make a call across back to wherever the original request came from. OK, so that's one technique. And the other one is a callback. So a callback mechanism is where the client and server essentially spin around. They turn into a different role. So initially, oops, stick with my colors. So if I've got my client making the request across to the server, all right, so this is my API, I'm going to firstly, as per before, validate the request, make sure that there's nothing immediately broken. If it is, then send back 400 bad data. And if it's OK, then as part of the data that is fed in from the client, we have a URL that this server will become a client and make a call back to the original client, which becomes a server. So as far as the information that comes across, we're going to get fed a URL for the callback so that we know where to go. Now, this does rely on the server turning into a client and being able to make a network connection out to that endpoint. OK, so as far as the processing, so whatever the processing is, and then this is then going to make a call to whatever that callback URL is. So OK, and that uh, is the other mechanism for doing asynchronous invocation. So on one hand, a maybe a bit of a chatty interaction between client and server. Okay, so this can put additional 
requests across a network that aren't technically necessary because I guess the ideal in an interaction where you're doing asynchronous processing is when you are done, you tell someone else about it. In this case, we're making a bunch of requests to try and get the data back. On the callback side of things, overall less chattiness involved, but it is really constrained by the need for this to be able to call back to, to the client. So the client and server turning around and this becoming the client and this becoming the server. So not always possible. Now you may find that you need to combine these. So a callback mechanism might make sense if you control the client and the server interaction, so they are inside your data center or inside your ecosystem, because presumably you can go and set up the network. As far as the polling one, this is where you, it's the wild west, you're out in the open internet and you don't know whether you've got a network path back. So these are the two options for shoehorning asynchronous invocation into HTTP.